Hi everybody, welcome to the Hung Lu Virtual Studio Visit. This was done as a part of the Dallas Art Fair. Your host is Tanya Turner Carroll, special guest Dorothy Moss, and of course, the artist Hung Lu. I wanted to show this to the Dallas audience because it relates very much to a painting that you have in the Dallas Museum of Art. So probably um, you've seen that Rauschenberg as you've walked around the DNA. The next one. Um, this is a Robert Kelly painting, and I wanted to point this one out. This was something we wanted to present to our Dallas audience as well, um, because he is someone that the Dallas audience has loved and followed for a, a quite a number of years. And this is a very significant painting of his that we brought to our online presentation. And this is a brand new work that Hong Lu just finished um, probably about a month ago. And it's, it's a very beautiful image. I wanted to show it because it is really relevant, I think, to what's going on in the world right now and how Hung is using her imagery to offer messages of hope for the world now. You can see that in the background, she has a silver leaf um, on the background and then it's shining back through this image of, a, of an ancient cave painting full of angels and apsaras and, and you see so many sort of um, trademark elements of Han's style in this work, like the circle. And again, we have the, the Chinese imagery and, you'll, and we'll talk about how that has evolved and continued alongside her paintings of American subjects. This is a Hunt Slonim work um, he is a fairly new addition to our gallery and is in many, many museum collections as well. And, um, and he's very concerned with the natural world, particularly animals, and how, um, how we fail sometimes to see what's right in front of us that's full of beauty as well. Thanks. And this is a gem dime that we brought specifically for the Dallas audience. Um, it's a very important print uh, from the collection of the master printer that works with Hung Wu um, as well, and uh, is the master printer that Gem Dime has invited into his studio to be one of three um, printers that he has worked with throughout his life. And now we are ready to move into Hung Lu's studio. So I'm going to go to Hung now. I just want to show you uh, some uh, reference uh, photographs taken um, majority, maybe exclusively by photographer Dorothea Lane. Her archive is a uh, home at the Oakland Museum of California. It's a hometown museum. I've been mainly focused on 1930s. I just show you a few photographs and then give you some background. One photograph <clears throat> is uh, some school, young elementary school students uh, in 19, early 1942, uh, it's after Pearl Harbor. It's the uh, uh, Pledge of Allegiance at uh, elementary school in San Francisco, Raphael Will Elementary School. And uh, you could tell some of those students, <clears throat> uh, Asian, well, Asian Americans, uh, a, a lot of them actually Japanese Americans. You know what happened later. I'm going to show some paintings based on this and uh, <clears throat> some migration photographs, which uh, Dorothea Lang took a lot of them. Women, children, the most famous, of course, was the migrant mother with children. And this is the children 
in their family car with loaded、uh, all the stuff they own, travel, you know, migrate or fled the dust bowl all the way to the west coast to California, and、uh, a Mexican American young man with a license plate California and playing a song. Yeah, this this uh, uh, all all this、uh, photograph. I'll just show you a few. And the young girl, probably I would say twelve, maybe eleven, but、uh, working the field with adults already in her face, full of、uh, you know, kind of a.、Uh, she looks tired, but.、Uh, Also, there's strength there. I remember Dorothy saw the image and said she was tired, but not defeated, just like her, probably us now, the spirit of us now. So,、uh, follow this. I'll show you based on the young girl working the field. This is the painting I did, and、uh, you can see on her face. I used a lot of colorful lines, and、uh, in a way, I felt like、uh, her face, not just simply a face, is I'm doing topography of a human face, and each line probably like、uh, a story,、uh, very personal, but also. You know, very common, like the anxiety going through, the famine they going through, and、uh, you know, and、uh, they going through mountains and the rivers and the life. You know, over overcame a lot of difficulties to not just survive but thrive. So, I it's my tribute to this, you know, anonymous young. Young woman, and、uh, if she were ten in the thirties, she now is what ninety years old. So anyway,、uh, in photograph, she is forever young. In my painting, I honored her, but also I felt like just like、uh, my mom's generation. And then I'll show you a few more paintings based on Dorothy Lange's photograph. Like this one, you saw the photograph of this young man playing music and、uh, with a California license plate. I added a, a colorful California map here, and、I、move on to another painting, which is a bigger painting. It's、uh, titled the Kern County, California. You know, in the、uh, during the Great Depression, a lot of families with children、uh, migrated to California, and they live in the you know temporary like a, a tents and not not enough food. Children without the shoes and、uh, with the shabby clothes, but A teacher, a young woman, just、uh, with the full of、uh, joy and love, teaching them. I have a dear friend. Her mom was one of the teachers. Many years later, after she passed away, and the, some of the students said, "We remember her, Mrs. Katani, in Arvin, and."、Uh, Said she one day brought a whole table set to show us, you know, how to eat a formal dinner. And some people said, "Are you crazy? They even don't have shoes." But she said, "You never know what's their future." So that spirit, I really love. Uh, uh, again, today education still. Is super super important, and、uh, they play balls. And、uh, this 
I added a California map on that bowl. And uh, a lot of uh, migrant people, even though not only exclusively from Oklahoma, but uh, they call them Okies. Some could be from part of Texas or Arkansas. So this is an Oklahoma map. And uh, because there's balls and circles, it's a part of uh, my, if you want to say, painting vocabulary. So besides just uh, simple circles on the painting, I decided to add some colorful canvases. And uh, I see if, first of all, the echoes of the round balls, but also to play with the colors because, uh, um, you know, when children, there's a children's book, like uh, when you put the three primary colors, you mix yellow and blue becomes green. You mix uh, red and yellow becomes orange. When you mix blue and red becomes purple. So it's a kind of a playful, also uh, kind of a celebratory for the children's bright future. So this is uh, my opinion to honor the, the teachers who taught the migrant children and also for a better future for the, for the children. And another one, I showed you the photos of children in the car travel with the family when they roll down the window, through the car window, they, you know, kind of observing the world and, uh, and to a new world to them. So I enjoy, you know, look at each child's face and also their whole uh, family, family car, such a um, old beat of a car, but that's their family vehicle. So I like each mark I made here is again like a, a little story or record on the children's faces, but on the you know all the scars, all the bends on the cars. Another painting based on uh, Dark Gallen's photograph. This one is you. I showed you the uh, historical photograph of Dorothy Lang. She was hired to document the Japanese American how you know the process of this, you know that government sent them to the internment camp, and uh, she took a lot of photographs. Some were not even allowed to be in public for many years. This is the children at elementary school in San Francisco. And then they all a pledge allegiance to American flag. And then I use some of patterns that happen to be on the children's clothes, like the American flag. But the stars to disperse at that time in 1942, there were 48 stars, so they all over the place. And uh, I also had a metal blue star. Uh, as uh, as uh, uh, probably some of you know that uh, uh, since last five years, I pretty much focus only on America historical photograph mostly by Dorothea Lane. But uh, for all those years, uh, I have been uh, working on, uh, based on historical photograph of Chinese America. Um, especially now with the coronavirus, I really think there's no hard like a jump a switch from Chinese subject to American subject. I we are all the same as a human beings. And I feel like uh, I was sent to the countryside during Cultural Revolution, working with the with Chinese peasants, very poor, very primitive way to work in the field for four years. So I look at Dorothy Allen's photograph. I felt like they're not too much different at all. So anyway, this is a, uh, I just felt like a history 
uh, we share a lot, regardless in China, in the US, and Europe. And uh, this kind of work, I started the most recent work, I started to break it down to this different pieces put together, assembles, like assemble, like a, this image printed based on my painting, my painting based on Dorothy and Lance photo, but based on my painting, print out, I painted again on aluminum sheets. And then Dorothy and Lance photograph, I didn't do anything directly on the aluminum, aluminum sheets. They all cut out. And then I add a canvas like this. And uh, this case also, I added, uh, she was holding on um, about the wire. So I felt like from a uh, 2D, I like to expand the about the wire to a real one like this. Okay, I'll take it down so I can put it back correctly. But anyway, I like this uh, uh, rusty, uh, but the wire now they not they don't call use but the but the wire got online because the pre owned about the wire but uh, even this is uh, some history you know some uh, is is a uh, okay see, I put it back so this is a a, a new direction I break it down put them together so created uh, just beyond the a uh, square uh, rectangular canvases. So this is one of those. And uh, I'll show you a few more, but this is uh, unfinished. And this is on plywood based on my painted image. The image is ca uh, also came from Dorothy Allen's photograph. Then I painted them again. Um, we for add more things, for example, this one, that one. I'll just show you the possibility. For example, if I have a Dorothy lens photograph on aluminum, what if I add to this piece, all here, all this side, all here, you know, all <clears throat> I think uh, I did another dimension to it. Uh, I'm waiting for the print shop <clears throat> to come back to reopen. I will work on more pieces to finish this unfinished piece. <clears throat> some images, for example, some images like this, uh, based on my painting. What if I I'm thinking it's very interesting. For me, it's new, but also it's a kind of it's a new way to create create a, a scene of a, uh, you know different uh, I would say situations of like a play, for example. If this image, I add a a red canvas makes a big difference then I add a blue or what if I add two what will happen I don't know I just feel this is a new way to work and to break some boundaries to have a to have a more more possibility of fun to take over the environment and I want to show you a couple more of these uh, ensemble pieces. One is this. This is a, a couple. Again, they uh, migrate to the west, leaning against their car. I, I still, I, I like this beat up car for, sorry. But uh, this is on aluminum. I painted again 
and I added some birds. The birds, uh, uh, Oklahoma State bird, called the scissor-tailed uh, flycatcher, I believe. And uh, this like two love birds echoes the, the human relationship. Then I add a canvas here. It could be blazing sun, could be something else. But anyway, the interesting thing is that uh, Oklahoma uh, le uh, State License Place is a heart shape. So I call this a love story, the relationship between the couple and, uh, and their heart journey together. And uh, another one I'm finished is here. <clears throat> This is a, a woman working in the field, cotton field, carry a big stack of cotton. And, uh, and I, I'm still, I'm waiting for other components <clears throat> just to play with it. And the most recent work, uh, because of the coronavirus, we all sheltered in place. My place is the studio. Luckily, I still can come to studio every day. I started to, you know, do some, I feel like a, a lot of people, we pray. We, we, we pray for, you know, uh, the, our, you know, uh, how say, overcome uh, this, this, uh, this hard time. We together, uh, and what uh, happened is uh, 40 years ago, I, when I was a graduate student at the Central Academy of, of Fine Arts in Beijing, and I, I, my focus was mural. I got a chance to visit some uh, ancient mural site. The most important one uh, was uh, called the Dunhuang Grotto along the old Silk Road. Uh, I have this book. It's uh, David Hackney visit China. He did a, uh, called a China Diary, uh, published uh, in early 80s. In 1980, he visited my school when I was a graduate student. And uh, there's a photograph in the book. And uh, myself in the middle with my fellow graduate student, two guys, I don't remember their names. But anyway, this is a better photo of that. And uh, David Hackney asked us to show him our work. My, uh, the two guys from oil department, oil painting department showed their work. And he said uh, their work pretty much like academic, like uh, nudes and, uh, you know, uh, pretty much portraits like that. But uh, he said here in the book, he said, uh, uh, he called me Mrs. Liu. Mrs. Liu did large cartoons and the drawings on, quote, quote, an apprentice, rather unexpectedly religious themes illustrating the life of Buddha. This surely, I thought, would not have been permitted during the Cultural Revolution. And he was right. So 40 years exactly later, after I painted this uh, garage or, or did those drawings on the floor and in, in the caves without lighting, now I'm revisiting those images. I did uh, uh, some of for example, this uh, started with a circle of uh, wind forces. You know, the forces with wings, they're not uh, like important, but they like a phrase, like a little decorative components in the cage, sometimes next to Buddha a Bodhisattva. Then I moved on to a bigger painting. This is uh, in the olden days along the Silk Road some uh, merchants, they took their, you know, merchandise, travel all the way to Central Asia, Middle East, 
to to trade, and uh, before their trade, they always pray Bodhisattva for a safe journey. So this is a, a painting uh, I uh, I titled uh, "Pray Praying for Safe Journey" because uh, for us, I think uh, life is a journey; it's a longer journey, and every day is. Uh, uh, you know, from here to there, it's their physical journey, literal journey, but also their metaphorical journey. And the other day, Alicia Key talked about uh, her new book, said just uh, it's not a retrospective or memoir, just my journey. So I like it. So, you know, we we are on the journey now. And uh, then the most recent work, I almost finished. It's this one. This is a uh, a woman, a prayer in next to a lotus pond. And the, the reason is not that the, 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 the woman was African American. It's uh, because of some old came as early as the fourth century. And uh, over the years, the color, uh, especially white color, has uh, led. So the oxide, the, the color was oxidized into a white become black. So the, I like the way it showed. You still can tell where the face is, the lips, everything, but also the white turned black. So the aging thing is very interesting to me too, because that part of history, what uh, was different, the, the skin color probably it is a, uh, somehow it, it's, uh, you know, it, it, it doesn't make any difference to me. So anyway, this is uh, almost that. Uh, it's my uh, uh, meditation piece on my prayer and at my studio for, you know, uh, for a, a, a better, uh, a better future or for everybody to stay safe and be positive. So that's uh, pretty much it. Uh, I think I'm done with my tour, and uh, I guess I go into the front of the computer. Uh, we can open up to the uh, to, to to whoever on the on Zoom. All right. You can turn that on your oh. Thank you, Nick. Yep. <laughs> Okay, I'm back. So, Dorothy, would you like to um, tell us a little bit about what the retrospective, the upcoming retrospective at the Smithsonian will encompass in Hung's work and where you'd like to see it go, maybe traveling to other museums as well? Yes, I'd be delighted to. But Hung is a difficult act to follow. I'll say that. Um, that was a beautiful tour. And um, Hung and I have been working together on a retrospective focused on her portraiture, which has been an important part of her life since she was a little child. I'm learning as I write the catalog essay, and there will be a significant um, catalog that will go with this exhibition. Um, and we have contributing authors working on the catalog right now. Uh, but Hung Lu, as a little child, had her uh, photograph taken in studio family portraits in China every year. Her mother orchestrated these um, studio visits. And, um, and so portraiture has been a part of her life growing up. And this exhibition will look at uh, her portraits from the time she was young to her current body of work based on Dorothea Lange's portraits. Um, and I'm really excited about it because it's a, a group of, of her work that has not been brought together before. It's a groundbreaking exhibition for the National Portrait Gallery because we have never had a retrospective um, uh, ba um, focused on an Asian American artist. So it's exciting in many ways. And, um, and I invite you all to be there. It's opening on May 21st, next spring. And, and I'll look forward to seeing you there. I just want to say something. Uh, Dorothy is a 
younger generation, uh, it's my my son generation. But uh, she is uh, she first of all, she is uh, full of energy and passion, and also guess what? She has an old soul too. <laughs> so I, it's a pleasure to work with her, and uh, we. Uh, I think beyond just the, oh, uh, she's doing a show. She's a curator. But we become a pretty good friends, right? <laughs> Extended family. Mm-hmm. And also, we, she really digged into not just the materials, not just uh, that's a painting or drawing. She wants to know more behind that, the historical, you know, uh, personal, all the stories and uh, may, I think not everything can be in the catalog, but she's uh, such a, a wonderful person to work with. Also, I so love so much to work with the younger people, <laughs> like old oh, person. <laughs> uh, yeah. And it's been an honor for me and for the National Portrait Gallery team to work with Hung because her life story is truly remarkable. She's one of the greatest living artists working today. And I'm so proud to uh, be part of her journey um, with this exhibition. And, um, and I do think that the stories that she tells through her own story are universal and they could not be more relevant um, than now. I'm the story of strength and resilience that she tells, um, her ability to make those who have been on the margins visible to us all, um, to, uh, highlight the lives of children who have come through turbulent times and found strength in those times and moved on, um, is, you know, this is relevant now more than ever. So I I hope that people will find strength in her story as told through this exhibition. Thank you, Dorothy. In the exhibition, we're focusing really on Hung. Um, In the catalog, we will have some of the um, Dorothea Lang photographs reproduced and and perhaps on some of the labels. reproductions of the photographs, but Hung's work is so powerful yeah. and, and this, and she works in a large scale. And one of the things that we're um, um, negotiating with our design team right now is the National Portrait Gallery is the third oldest building in Washington. So our spaces are not like a traditional contemporary art space. Yeah. So I'd rather give the space we have to Hung's paintings and then have the Dorothea Lang photographs and supplementary material illustrated in the catalog. But it, it's a great question, and I thought I thought a lot about that. Yeah. It, it's also, Dorothy, it, just added to it, Dorothy has invited uh, one of the writers. Actually, uh, it's uh, Dorothy Lang's goddaughter. Yes. Yes. That's and, uh, exciting. He had published quite a few books on Dorothy Lang. So there's a, I, I'm sure they're focused on her. She's my hero. Yeah, one of my heroes, important hero. Yeah. It's beautiful work, Hung. Really great to see your studio, Thank too. Thank you, Marianne. Thank you. You bet. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else? Is Ben there? <laughs> Just curious. Ben. Hi, Hung. Hi. <laughs> where are you? Are you in your tux? Where are you? Oh, I'm here. <laughs> Can you see me? <laughs> maybe, maybe. Well, what one day, uh, you know, somebody in control. I will see you. Yeah. Hi. Ben is is the Hong's youngest collector. <laughs> He's in New York City, and he has been there through this whole uh, crisis. Oh, Ben, I can see you. You are more casual today, casual Friday, and uh, he's only ten, right? This time I got it right. Yeah. <laughs> he, t- he said some uh, good things about my work. I mean, uh, like a little cr- critique, right? Yeah. Yeah, I love Hung's work because she, she puts all her culture into her work, like with her signature circle that she puts on most of her paintings. And how she does, she did that um, 
a bunch of different dandelions that were a symbol of hope. And I love how she takes these old pictures and that are black and white and turns them into these beautiful, colorful things that look exactly like the picture, but with millions more color. <laughs> wow. Can you believe he's 10? Wow. <laughs> I think, Dorothy, maybe you consider to invite him to write for the catalog. I know. Seriously. Hum, can you talk a little bit about um, the, the book that was so important to you as you were growing up in China? The Jean Christo story? Can you talk a little bit about that and how that kind of relates to, um, for me, that ties together everything you've ever done? Because to me, um, your work is so much, like Ben was saying, about hope. Mm -hmm. And no matter what you paint, that really seems to be the underlying theme. And when I, um, can you talk a little bit about the influence of, that book from the, what was it, late 1800s, early 1900s, and how that philosophy has impacted your work. Yeah, uh, I read a, a book, you know, Cultural Revolution started in 1966, and uh, that time, the only books were allowed was a Marxist, uh, you know, Angus and Lenin, Stalin, and including Mao Zedong's book. And uh, I, uh, uh, we try, uh, I, I went to a, a very good, uh, prestigious uh, uh, boarding girl boarding school, happened to read some books, but then Cultural Revolution, all the so called uh, non proletarian books are burned. And the big mountainful of books in front of the cultural minister's uh, building burned for many days. And uh, so, so, so happened that some uh, of my contemporary, my, uh, my friends, secretly saved a few books, uh, like Balzac, like, uh, you know, uh, maybe uh, Victor Hugo. And this, this particular one is uh, uh, called Jean Christophe. Really, is a uh, uh, a bi biography of a uh, Beethoven, you know. But it's by Roman Roland. I believe he got the Nobel Prize in literature uh, in the early twentieth century. Anyway, we got this book, of course, in Chinese translation. And it was it's great to see uh, artist's journey and uh, during a very depressing time, but uh, not just a big historical background backdrop, but also a personal journey. And the end was so great. I remember uh, in Chinese so well years ago in U.S. My son found me an English translation of Jean Christophe, which is a really is a, for is, is Saint Christopher. And the end is a new dawn, a new dawn after dark, dark, dark night. And Jean Christophe was carrying a baby across the river and it's getting deeper, deeper. And the, the, the baby on his back is getting heavier and heavier. And the, People in the, you know, uh, behind him said, "Look, he will never make it." Ridiculed him, laughed at him, all kind of things. And then he walked further away. He could not hear them, but the baby got so heavy and almost is a breakdown. And he turned around, and asked, "Who are you, baby?" And the, the little baby said, "I'm the." the days to come, I'm um, the future. So it's really, it's like a, St. Christopher carrying baby Jesus across the river. So I so touched by that. I, I just felt like, oh my God, we all carry our 
burden, personal burden, historical and carry our cross, cross the river in the darkness and hope we will get it to the other side and the new dawn is there waiting for us. So this is a, both a kind of a heavy, but also very, uh, I would say, uplifting spirit. For many years, I remember the book. Now I have both in Chinese and English there. And uh, uh, whenever I get it, you know, when I get a little depressed, <laughs> like the, the reality too heavy, I feel like I need to go back to 50 some years ago when I read that book. It still feels new because in my, my age, history is a, it's a burden on my shoulder, but also I feel it's my responsibility. I have to tell people, you know, history is not just the days, statistics, and some great uh, leaders for, you know, good leaders, and bad leaders, parents, but also those people, people, those uh, anonymous people, but they have, if they have a face like a Dorothy L. Lane document, some faces left, those faces need to be, need to be seen because they never been seen, never um, be, they never had a voice if you want to say. But anyway, I felt like I love their faces so much. And uh, hi, Lucia, oh, I can see you now. Uh, anyway, I, I think for them, for the young generation, for the future, we needed to tell them not, not just the uh, writing, but also images to tell them here. There was a young girl uh, lived her life. And uh, the, it's one picture worth what, 1,000 words or something like that. So I think uh, uh, that's part of what I feel is uh, both burden and the motivation for me to do my work. Does anybody else have anything they would like to ask? Or Okay. What are some of the things that were most motivating to you that you treasure? From your from Dorothea Lang. Uh, Can you hear me? I can. I heard. I heard the last part of the question. I think the most uh, 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 thing I treasure all the uh, of 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 her work is, uh, as herself said, I not just to show they are going through uh, harsh, their hardship, but also their stress and their spirit, you know? So I felt yeah. like that's a part of, for me, to extend the, the, strength, uh, the strength and the, the spirit, as well as uh, their dignity, you know? Even yeah. if they were in the, most the difficult situation, no clean clothes, no home, no food, but they maintain their human dignity. Dignity, we need to respect them. I just saw a program, uh, a woman in charge with uh, how to deal with all the deaths in New York and uh, how to show respect to the living but to the dead. She said, I take one person at a time. I remember when my grandmother died, we lived in the sixth floor apartment in Beijing. And the, the primitive and all people carry my grandmother downstairs. They were talking, laughing, like they're carrying a, a suitcase or some furniture. But I, I immediately thought about that. It's uh, you respect that means you, sh you show your respect for human, for human beings, no matter life or death. And I think that part, I really think that humanity is very important. That's uh, throughout Dorothy Allen's work. You can see it. You, can, you feel it. How much she was not just uh, treat them as a subject for I click, click my photo. She let the children touch her camera. The dirty hands touch her lens. And she had a relationship with them. You just can't tell. 
And uh, maybe also uh, she, the reason I respect her so much, as a woman in the 30s, carrying the big connection, drop, drop herself to the, the worst possible places to shoot people. So that part, it's gave me a lot of, uh, you know, that that's our value the most. I treasure the most. So I was saying that that Hung Lu's ability to um, make to honor those who have come before us and to especially honor those who may not have been seen and may not have been visible in their own lifetime because they were people who were in the midst of a great struggle um, or destitute. Um, is one one reason why I think her work is so powerful in the context of the National Portrait Gallery. Her work will be shown down the hallway from our America's President's Gallery and all of the powerful people who have shaped this country. And here she is bringing to light the story of those who, uh, who had no power and she's instilling power in them through her work. And I'd like to say about what Dorothy is doing at the National Portrait Gallery, it's really so important and so amazing the way that Dorothy is trying to bring every person, every American into the National Portrait Gallery. And um, Dorothy, can you talk a little bit about the work that you're doing to bring women artists into the National Portrait Gallery and the story of, of Lucille. Oh, yes. So the <laughs> Portrait Gallery is, is part of a, a, a larger program at the Smithsonian called the Smithsonian American Women's History Initiative to bring the stories of American women's experience to light um, across disciplines in the sciences and the arts to highlight women artists like Hung Lu, who are groundbreaking and, um, and influential. And I remember my, my young daughter, Lucille, who appeared here momentarily um, when she was five years old. She walked through our first floor gallery of 18th century portraits and said, boys, 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 this is a boy's place. <laughs> and I thought at that point I needed to make a change. And Hung Lu is one of the incredible artists who has jumped on this bandwagon um, to, to make Washington look different. <laughs> so... Um, I'm also happy, as Tonya mentioned earlier, that this, this exhibition will travel across the country. And so we're looking to partner with museums, um, hopefully one in Texas um, and in the Midwest um, and, and in the Southwest we, and in the West Coast. We want this exhibition to travel. Uh, so, so keep that in mind if you have ideas. Thank you, guys. Anyone else? Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. It's this great opportunity. The next to the to the real thing. The next, the best. Next yeah. to the, someday, we'll we'll get together for sure. Yeah. For real. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Very good. Thank, Thank you. Thank you all so much. Yes. Thank it was you. Thank you. That's fantastic. I'm noticing other people with their some Hung Lu works in the yeah, back. Yes, some beautiful and works. I love background. it. I wonder if anybody wants to speak to that or if Hung wants to like comment on that. I mean, not mine. I mean, weird. It's, but like, um, there's a woman with a really beautiful, lovely, giant one in her background. And I would love to hear from her. Hi, I'm Teddy. <laughs> I have. I, oops. I lost oh. tongue. Okay, I saw some. Hi, Hi. My husband purchased a po the Polly Bemis for me many, many years ago from Bernice for my 50th birthday. <laughs> and I just, it's one of my, our favorite paintings uh, in our collection. Yeah. It's so I beautiful. I just love it. Oh, it's nice to see you, Tanya. Good to see you, Tanya. Beautiful painting. Everybody, thank you. Thank you so much. Mm -hmm. Thank you. So, oh wow! Wait, let there's salt. Let's oh, see there salt, Marcy. 
Wait, yeah. can you see? Can you see yeah. this? Oh, oh, look at that! That's beautiful. Yeah, it's a yeah. wonderful painting. It's absolutely our oh, favorite wow. painting in the whole collection. Like this. Wow. Oh, it's amazing! <laughs> it's hard to get the whole thing in, but maybe wow. that's okay. it is. <laughs> Yeah, Marcy, I'm so glad to see that hung in your home. I remember when you guys bought that. That's amazing. And I'm loving to see Benjamin with his dandelion. I know. It's and then that. Polly Bemis, holding which is up an amazing one. story. And then I'm, I'm seeing one up Daya here. has her other Dauphin yeah. chip, the woodcut print. Like, there's, there's some cool stuff happening here, you guys. That's really cool. And then I saw Jan with her for Stephanie. Good job. Mm -hmm. This is cool. <laughs> So the South painting, actually, um, can you get a little closer to that South painting? Oh, that's from Portland, right? Yes. Yes. And that, that painting, um, so right. it was meant to be in an exhibition of Hans three years ago or something. And, um, and you guys purchased that before the exhibition opened. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. I never got to see a painting in person, so I'm really glad to see oh, it right now. It's it's really hard to. Oh I'm no, it's great! You can see the brush strokes when you do that. That's so, so fabulous. It is so wonderful, and also that was we had that on the cover of the catalog for that exhibition. So um, that's a that's a beautiful, amazing. Good job, guys. Let's see. The place is incredible. All right, everybody. Uh, stay safe and uh, you too. You too. Thank you, Hong. Thank you so much. Thank, Thank you. you so much for doing Thank this. You, Tanya. Thank you. Thank you, guys. Thank you, everyone, for Bye. Thank you. Stay safe, safe you everybody. Good night. And, um, and have a nice, safe weekend. Bye. 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 Bye.